In this video, we're going to explain the basic process of casting prop bones just in time for the Halloween season, and also cover just some basic steps for casting polyurethane resins into silicone molds. Now for this particular video, we're going to cheat a little bit and use a bone colored resin. Now this is a one of our newer products. This is a resin called Artcast Pourable, and this is just a very low cost, cheap, uh, bone colored resin that just cures kind of a light tan kind of bone color in its natural state. But we're going to do some finishing techniques to the end to help uh, push it over into looking more like aged bones. Now we're going to be casting this into a silicone mold with no release and that's so that uh, we can make sure any paint or any finishing methods we use stick later on. And this is a mold made with Platzil Gel 25 with a shell made out of 1512X polyurethane resin. Now to begin, the Artcast resin, this resin mixes one to one by weight. Now you can also do it by volume, but if you mix it by volume, you'll wind up with uh, a little bit of extra part B left over because you'll actually be using extra part A if you're mixing it uh, one to one by volume. So you can do that, but you're always gonna get a more accurate result mixing it one to one by weight. Now to begin, uh, we're going to dispense out about 300 grams of part B and then 300 grams of part A. Now, one of the things here, real important to emphasize, we are in Texas and it's uh, been a fairly humid summer. And you'll notice I'm using a wood stir stick here that's uh, set to the left-hand side there. And anytime you're using anything wooden to mix with, like a wooden stir stick, make sure that those stir sticks are stored in a climate controlled area that's as dry as possible because uh, stir sticks or anything wooden or anything porous for that matter will absorb humidity out of the air and then mix that into your casting material. So if you're in a very humid area like uh, Louisiana or southern Texas or especially Florida, watch out because wooden stir sticks are a great way to introduce humidity into your material and possibly result in contamination or even foaming in really high humidity environments. Now one of the nice things about this particular resin is this is a relatively fast cure. And one of the things I want to talk about here is with fast cure resin, you have less chance of moisture contamination because that reaction happens before that humidity starts taking effect on the plastic. Now a quick word about mixing and pouring. You want to mix thoroughly, but you want to start pouring before the resin starts warming up. It will start to exotherm and pretty soon, and if that starts happening while you're mixing, you're not going to get as good of a pour. Make sure also when you're pouring that you find one spot in the bottom of the mold and pour it and allow the resin to seek its level. You don't want to pour all over the mold and create turbulence. And with Artcast, the reaction occurs in about three to four minutes. You'll start to see that transition from that dark iced tea color over to a bone color. And I always like to keep what's left over in the mixing cup and watch that change color. And when that has changed over to that bone color, that's a good sign that you're ready to demold your part. So always keep that handy because that's a great gauge of a couple of things of when the resin is ready to demold. And also just to be able to grade your mixing work. If uh, all of that's uh, uh, well mixed with no residue in the mixing cup, then you know you did a good job of mixing. Now, as with all polyurethane formulas, remember that uh, thicker cross-sections will cure faster, whereas thin cross-sections cure slower. So that's one of the reasons we use that mixing cup to gauge the progress of what's inside the mold. Because if those thin areas have set up completely, then you know that everything inside your mold is ready for demolding. So a part like this can actually be demolded in a pretty short amount of time, usually about 10 to 15 minutes. Whereas a really thin cross-section you might want to leave in the mold up to 30 or 45 minutes. Now also good practice before you put up your resin after your casting is shoot a little bit of poly purge in the part A. And what that does is it displaces any oxygen that's right up against the polyurethane and preserves that part A and keeps it from crystallizing. And that'll uh, really help the lifespan of that liquid product.
Now, a final touch here we're going to do just to push this over more into the look of aged bone is we're going to use some of the Sculpt Nouveau Metal Wax to finish out our piece. And the Sculpt Nouveau Metal Wax, one of the nice things about this is if you apply this to your resin piece when the resin is still warm, it goes on beautifully and gets into all the little crevices and all the fine detail. And what we're going to do is kind of a rub out technique here where we apply this all over our piece and then use a soft paper towel to pull it back and expose that resin again. Now this time of year being Halloween and all, we post a lot of tutorials and a lot of uh, information not only on YouTube but also on Instagram. So if you don't follow us already on Instagram, be sure to check us out. Our handle is at Biddy Mold Supply and you can find a lot of uh, tips on casting techniques, mold making techniques, and of course uh, new product updates and most importantly coupon codes. So be sure to check us out at Biddy Mold Supply. Now back to the Sculpt Nouveau Wax. This is a two-stage process of the way it dries and cures. Once you've applied that wax and rubbed it off, and you want to do that as soon as possible because it is almost impossible to remove once it completely dries and cures. But uh, once that completely dries and cures, it provides a nice protective coating and uh, you can apply a lot of different coats of different colors if you're so inclined. But as it stands here, this is a great way to finish out a bone colored prop where basically we just have that tan color as our base and then we finish it out with that brown wax. And there you have the basic process of casting a skull using Art Cast Pourable. And as you see here, Art Cast Pourable is a very economical resin that's ideal for casting low cost decorative parts and props and anything that needs a cheap resin for bulk casting. And of course, you can find all of these products on our website at brickintheyard.com. And remember to like and subscribe. I'll put the link there on the upper left to uh, subscribe. So be sure you check that out if you haven't already. And on the right hand side, I'm going to put a link to one of our older videos explaining the process of making a skull mold with gel tin. So be sure to check that out as well. And be sure to visit us online at brickintheyard.com.